Good morning. God bless you. Just making sure everything is on that I'm on Facebook and use and YouTube. God bless you, my precious brothers and sisters. What a blessing it is to be here with you today. Amen. June 17th, Thursday, our final day for this three day, uh, three days of a video broadcast that we do Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And welcome to um, Glory Unfolding 2. My name is Henry Falcone from Flame of Fire Ministries, Kingdom Awakening Messengers. It is a blessing to be with you. Amen. And uh, I thank God for the opportunity of getting together with you today. I had a few people tell me they may not be able to attend our broadcast today. And so anyways, thank God it's recorded. And so that you can always watch this at a later time. And those that God has to watch it live, will he'll touch them and they will join our broadcast. Please feel free to sign in on the chat line. There's no where you, who you are and where you're from. We'd like to acknowledge you. Praise God. And so it's a great blessing. Katie is here. God bless you, Katie. God bless you from our sister from Canada. Amen. We love and appreciate you, Katie. Thank you for watching and being a faithful um, a servant of the Lord. Praise God. Just want to encourage those of you that may be watching to um, please uh, consider doing a watch party on Facebook. Watch party. You heard my New England accent there, didn't you? A watch party, you know, and, uh, and you know, that way others might be able to watch and join in with us. Amen. Don, Donna, thank you for watching. Donna's our moderator today, and she will be um, updating you as much as she can. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Reverend Lynn is still recuperating from her surgery. And she's doing much better, though. And uh, so please uh, continue to keep her in prayer. And uh, there's a few other people that I've gotten messages from that I really need healing in their body. So I, this morning, as I was waiting in my time with the Lord, I said, Lord, what's on your heart? And it was healing. So the Lord had me pray for those that I know need healing in their body and, and, and their family members. And also for, um, you know, for all of you on Facebook. So um, that need healing, physical healing, spiritual, emotional um, I just felt such a strong uh, presence of God to pray and release healing this morning. So if that's you and you need it, receive that today because I believe God's heard your prayer. Receive it. You know, I've, I've, I have many friends that have been telling me that they've gotten um, need healing for their bodies. And so, uh, you know, it was just really on. It's always on the Lord's heart, but he impressed it on my heart to really uh, begin to pray release uh, of healing. For, for, for us, for our families, for, for all of you. So praise God, you know, so just receive that today. Thank you, Lord. You know, oftentimes when I try to come before the Lord, I want, you know, um, I just want to say, what's on your heart, Lord? And my mom, who was not 93, that was her first question every day. She would just sit alone with the Lord and the first thing say, Lord, what's on your heart? Isn't that awesome? What's on your heart? And he would show her and he'll show us if we'll wait. You know, and today healing was very big and and also deliverance, too. I have to say the second part of the prayer time was like really about bringing that people that really need deliverance from circumstances and situations that seem to be impossible. So um, those are two things that God had me pray for all of you on Facebook and for all of you that 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 know me and that fellowship with me and ask me for prayer and our ministry for prayer. I just want you to know that today that God really you know, is hearing you. You heard your cries for deliverance and healing. So be expecting and begin to thank God now for it in advance. Thank him for it, that it will manifest in your life, your body, you know, your mind, your spirit, and in your family. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Father, we so appreciate you this morning. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We appreciate you so much. You are so beautiful, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. Lord, in our weakness, you are so strong. So you said, let the poor say that we're rich and let the weak say that we're strong. And that's what we're saying, Lord. But you call those things which are not as though they are. I thank you for your mighty deliverance today and your healing. Lord, even on this broadcast, I thank you, Lord, that those that need healing will be healed, body, soul, and spirit. Those that need deliverance today will be delivered body, soul, and spirit and their families, Lord. And even though we'll be talking about the tabernacle of David and about the Ark of the Covenant, Lord, Lord, the manifestation of your glory brings healing and it brings deliverance. 
and it sets the captive free. It brings, it heals the brokenhearted. It sets at liberty then that are bruised. It brings deliverance to the captives, the opening of the prison cells, the recovery of the sight of the blind. And today we can proclaim that this is the acceptable year of God's favor. So, Lord, touch those today, Lord, even on this broadcast that may not even hear what you had me pray today. Let that which you had me pray manifest in their lives. Let testimonies come forth that, Lord, cancers have been removed. Lord, leukemia, diabetes, Lord, fibromyalgia, fibromy whatever that word is, fibromyalgia, I can't even say it, <laughs> myalgia, yeah. And Lord, and blood disorders and muscle disorders and bones and ligaments, Lord, and heart conditions and diabetes, Lord, let them die and wither and be gone from their bodies today. Lord, let your healing power touch, Lord, whatever it is from, from, Lord, uh, from ringing in the ears to headaches, God, to, to uh, bowel issues, colon issues, God, lung issues, God, heart issues, God. I pray right now such a divine release of your healing hand. You know your, you know your sons and daughters. And today, let miracles be released, miracle healing power, miracle healing deliverance, finances, families, relations from addictions and bondages today, Lord. I pray such a release, such a strengthening, Lord, such a mighty deliverance, God, will come today. Miracle releasing, Lord. Lord, to those that will watch this broadcast, Lord, those that, Lord, that may not watch this broadcast that we're praying for, Lord, I thank you, Lord, let today be the day of change, let today be the day of healing, let today be the day of transformation in our lives and in our families, let our bodies come in divine alignment in, with divine health, not just healing, but bring us all into divine health, Lord. Lord, I thank you for even those that are elderly, Lord, from osteoporosis, Lord, and other things that may be affecting them and their bones and their muscles and their tendons and the issues and even the young ones, Lord, Lord, that from tendonitis, Lord, and all those things be healed in the name of Jesus, by the power of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the fire of Jesus, come Lord and heal your people, Lord. I thank you for healing fire to be released right now, healing deliverance, Lord. I declare, Lord, changes in families, changes in relationships, changes in addictions that they would be broken today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that today, Lord, your mighty hand would come forth, Lord, bringing healing, bringing deliverance, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for setting the captives free today, Lord. I thank you for your divine movement, Lord. I thank you for your divine presence today. I thank you that situations are changed today. Circumstances are changed today. Finances are changed today, God. Family situations are changed today, God. I thank you that today, God, healing has come to their bodies and their bodies have changed today. Today, Lord, Lord where there was no hope, they have hope. Where there was no strength, they have strength. Where there was no provision, they have provision. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you today, God, that today on this broadcast, Lord, that your word is going forth. You sent your word and you healed our diseases, Lord. I thank you today that diseases are gone, withered and died and every symptom that's attached to their bodies is broken in the name of Jesus. I thank you today, God, that those symptoms dry up and wither, Lord. And Father, that health, Lord, and life, God, is released into their body, soul, and spirit into their families. Lord, that which is dead will come alive. That which was sick is made well, Lord. That which needs to be removed to be removed, Father God, in the name of Jesus, depression, suicide, Side, discouragement to be broken right now in the name of Jesus in our family. We speak hope. We release hope. We release the joy of the Lord as your strength. We release your mighty power, God, to break every Lord power of darkness, Lord. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that you would destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus, I thank you for manifesting in our bodies, our souls, our spirit, our homes, our families, our finances, our work, our churches, our ministry, that those works are destroyed by your victory, by your blood and by your spirit, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. That those cancers, Lord, Lord, are, are Lord are dissolved and broken and removed from the body of those that have been afflicted by cancer, Lord, and leukemia, God, and blood diseases, God, and hepatitis, Lord, and diabetes, Lord, and God, these blood disorders, these bodily disorders, these white blood cell things, Lord. I thank you for Lord healing them. I thank you for today, God, touching their bodies, their souls, Lord, and and healing and restoring them, Lord. I thank you that blood counts will 
will become normal, Lord, that missing things in bloodstreams will be returned, Lord, that which has been, Lord, even with his vitamin deficiencies or deficiencies in the bloodstream, Lord, that they would be restored today in the name of Jesus. I say bodies come in line with the living word of God, come in line in the way that God has made you to come in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for your healing hand. Lord, you sent your word and you healed our diseases, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that by your stripes, Jesus, we were healed. I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the power of the name of Jesus. I thank you for the spirit of Jesus, the fire of God, Lord, that, Lord, you healed those that were sick and oppressed by the devil, and you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thank you that today those that don't have hope, Lord, will have hope. Today, right now, God, that their bodies, they will feel your power right now in their bodies. Lord, from migraine headaches never to come back again, from bowels, there's things, and feminine issues, God, and Lord, colon issues, Lord, and, 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 and digestive issues to be healed right now in the name of Jesus, that every spirit of infirmity is bound and commanded to leave their bodies in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft attack against their body, soul, spirit, and family broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We release health. We release healing. We release deliverance in the name of Jesus to everyone watching this broadcast, their homes, their families, in the name of Jesus, that today is a new beginning. Today is a new start. Today, that which was tried to be destroyed is healed. That which needs healing is made well in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the manifestation of your presence, of your glory, of your power, Jesus, of your healing love, Lord, to invade them, Lord. I thank you that this discouragement and despair is broken over this woman, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, broken over this man, over this teenager right now, God, this depression and suicidal thoughts, Lord, to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I release hope. I release strength, Lord. I pray right now that, Lord, the releasing of your angels to go and minister to them and surround them right now, Lord. And Lord, and I thank you for bringing the right people to the right to these people, Lord, to speak your word, Lord, to bring your word, God, to bring the help that they need right now in their time of need, Father. God, I thank you. I thank you for your miracle hand. I thank you for your miracle provision, Lord. I thank you, Father God. I pray for the fivefold ministry today, God, and for the pastors and the leaders and the apostles and the prophets and the teachers, God, that are serving you with all their heart, Lord. Father, you know their needs personally. God, you know their family needs. You know their church's needs. You know their ministry needs. And Father, I pray divine release to come, Lord, where there's been no breakthrough. I declare breakthrough through to come forth where there's been no breakout. I declare breakout to come forth, God. I thank you, God, that today, God, that where the where the where, where they have been facing knows that those no's are changed to yes. With those that have been closing their fists and holding on to finances and resources for these men and women of God, today they will be released to them in the name of Jesus with a sevenfold return. Father, every place that the enemy has robbed your people, your ministers, and each one of the families, Lord. I thank you that he's been found and that today he's going to restore those blessings sevenfold. Father God, I declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, prosperity and blessing, God, to come upon your people. Lord, that wherever the ark of the Lord was, there was peace, there was blessing, and there was prosperity. Lord, as Lord, let the ark of your presence, the ark of your glory, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, manifest that peace and protection and provision for who he is and who you are, God, in every home, every family, every church, and every ministry called by your name, God. I thank you what that which is impossible with men, God, is possible with God. I declare divine turnaround today, divine change today, God, in the homes, in the churches, in the ministry, God. I thank you, Lord, that resources are coming from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. I thank you for the benefactors that are being released right now to help your servants of God, Lord. I thank you for those, God, that have resources. I thank you, God, that today you will put them to the right people, Lord. You will put the people in need on the hearts of those that have supplies and resources to bless them and strengthen them and uplift their arms, Lord, for the advancement of your kingdom, Father. God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. I declare a new day. I declare a new beginning, Lord, for those that are watching this broadcast in the name of Jesus. I declare divine turnaround by the Spirit of God that today that which is upside down will be turned right side up in the families, in the emotions, in the bodies, Lord. Lord, in the finances, God, in the businesses, and in the ministry, God. I thank you that you're removing everything, God, that's not of your kingdom, that's not of your glory, that's not of your spirit, God, and you are placing it with your presence and your glory this morning, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Turn around, come forth. Deliverance, come forth. Healing, come forth. Lord, I thank you, God, that the broken will be mended in the name of Jesus. I thank you for those broken hearts that are being healed, Lord, that discouragement and despair and hopelessness to be broken, Lord, off of them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I release hope and the joy of the Lord to be their strength. Today, I declare those, those, those scales on the eyes to fall off in the name of Jesus, the spiritual wax in the ears to come out, God, any hardness of the heart to be removed in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive those that need to be forgiven today, God. Wash their sins away. Father God, as white as snow, God. Lord, let that let us come and reason together today. Though our sins may have been as scarlet, today you will make them white as snow. Lord, today I declare, Lord, and release, Lord, that we are willing and obedient, and we shall now eat of the good of the lands. Lord, I thank you for doors opened. Lord, doors open. Doors that were shut are now open. Doors of opportunity are open, God. Doors of new of new paths and new directions and new hope are open, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that we are not in the same place that we were, but God, you have brought us to a new place. You put us in a new pasture, God, a green pasture today. Things have changed, God. Today, things have changed. Today, things are coming into alignment with your word, your purposes, and your plans, Father, like never before, God. I declare that change to manifest in your life today, in your family, your church, in your ministry, my family, my, my wife's family, and all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for turning around. I thank you for turnarounds. I thank you for change. I thank you for the releasing of miracles today. The miracle release, Lord. The miracles that you are releasing from heaven to earth to come and manifest, God, for my brothers and my sisters, God. That the healing that, that you have from heaven will come, God, even to the broken bones, God. Even to where there's no legs, God, to grow out. Even where there's no eyes, Lord, to grow in, God. I thank you for supernatural miracle releasing, God, today, God. I I thank you, God, as they reach up today and touch the hem of your garment. They are made whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. I declare the impossible to become possible by the Spirit of God. I call those things which are not as though they are. Those buried promises, those forgotten promises, those, those prophetic words that may have, the enemy has stolen, I call them forth to be reactivated and reestablished, God, in the lives of, our, of your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. What's impossible with man is possible possible with God. And I pray and release the possibilities of God to each and every one watching this broadcast. I thank you. Those mountains are removed. Those mountains of debt, those mountains of lack, those mountains of financial situations, those mountains of physical situations, those mountains of family situations to be cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. I declare an opening, an open way, an open heaven now to come and surround my brothers and sisters, their families, their churches and ministry. I declare release of open heaven, open heaven, open heavens, open heavens, where they've been like brass. I say they are opened in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you where they haven't been able to reach you, they will reach you. Where they haven't been able to see you, they will see you. Where they haven't been able to feel you, they will feel you. I declare release, God, in the name of Jesus. I declare that which is upside down to be turned right side up in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow, God, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. 
Thank you, Lord. 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 Pastor Devin, the breakthrough has come. Thank you, Lord. The Lord keeps telling me three days, three days, three days, three days. On the third day, I don't know what God's doing for you, my brother, but God has moved for you. God has moved for you. There's going to be a tremendous change and a tremendous breakthrough, my brother. God's heard you. God's answered you, my brother. And you're going to see doors open that were shut. You're going to see new doorways opening for you and an expansion. The enemies tried to come and restrict you, but God has removed that restriction off of you. And God is opening the new doorways for you, my brother. And I believe you're going to begin to see things be really manifest in these next three days. And in the next three days, you're going to be in a new place. Wherever it is where you've been transitioning from, my brother, God is taking you from where you were to where you will be. And in the next three days, you're going to be planted in that new place of the Lord, that new positioning of the Lord, where that provision and all that God has for you to do and for, for, to touch your nation and touch the nations is coming forth. The enemies tried to stop you, but God, but God, but God has intervened for you. God has moved for you. You got the angels of armies of God moving on your behalf. And the Lord wants you to know that he's heard you, that he's answered you, that he's bringing forth all that you cried out, even that which you told no one, even the things that you've been hiding in the secrets of your heart, God says are now going to be manifested. You're going to see it with your own eyes. Things that you even didn't share with your wife that you kept tucked in your heart. God is bringing them forth and he's doing it in a very big way. You're going to see the mighty hand of God, my brother. Get ready, 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 because God is bringing new divine appointments to you. Divine, uh, God has to, has God has had to remove some people from you. God has had to shake some things from you. And that's been by the hand of the Lord so that he can bring those new people with you. Those that are going to go where you're going. You've had some people who've, who's, that have been a hindrance and God has had to remove them so that God can bring those with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that can be there. Hallelujah for you. And God is breaking through, brother. I'm thanking, brother, God's breaking through. And that even in that, that, that you wrote that COVID situation, that's why God's praying for healing. There is a protection. There is a Psalm 91 anointing over your life. And with that, I'm telling you, God is bringing the right people to you. This, this, this time is not by accident. It's a time of realignment, a time of reassignment, and a time of having God work with you in ways and in new ways that is going to bring great growth and great expansion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for protecting my brother and all the congregation, Lord. I thank you for keeping them from that COVID situation, Lord. And Father, you opened the doors here for us. You're going to open it there in Mauritius, God. And I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 And those of you that are watching, if you're a five-fold minister, or, you know, God spoke some specific things for you and for your church, your ministry, and your family. And for those, for the rest of us saints, God spoke some powerful releasing this morning. I don't do that. Not that I wouldn't do it. I, God has never had me do that in the, in the broadcast before with such power and authority like that. And so it's, it, but this is not my broadcast. This is his, it's what he wants. And if he wants to pray and release and, de and declare and decree his will and purposes over these airwaves to you, to your families, to my family, to our families, so be it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All the praise and glory goes to God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. So please receive it. Now, if you're just joining, go back to the beginning and you might, the Lord for about almost 20 minutes just had me pray and release. And that's not something that I do. Not that I haven't prayed like that, but that's just something God has never had me really do on a broadcast before like this, you know? So, you know, this, like I said, it's not about trying to do a broadcast. It's about obedience. It's about listening. It's about hearing. It's about allowing the Lord to do what he wants. And the ark of God, that ark that we should, talked about, it brings protection, it brings provision, and it brings peace. That's why David wanted to bring it. He knew it was a symbol of God's manifested glory. And I felt God really released glory. Thank you, Lord. Donna writes, God is on the other side and impossible for all things are possible with him. Amen. Amen. 
for Rose, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Amen. But I really believe God, I'm not sure if I said your name right, or if I even said it in the right order, but so forgive me if I didn't say it correctly, but God bless you, Katie, Pastor Devin, amen. My brother from Mauritius, amen, that I know someday God is going to bring us <laughs> together, amen, in person. Hallelujah. I love this brother in the Lord. We've been friends and brothers for several years now. Amen. We need to be obedient to the spirit of God. That's exactly right. Amen. That's why, you know, I, I shared with so many, I, I didn't even want to do broadcasts. I don't like doing them. I'd rather write than do broadcasts. But last year, God began to nudge me and push me, you know, and just when COVID hit, I felt such an urgent need to, to, to be like the tribe of Issachar. You know, I felt that tribe of Issachar anointing to understand the timing and the season of the Lord. What is the Lord doing? Why is he shutting everything down? And there was a purpose why the whole world shut down, why churches couldn't gather and assemble. And it's not that the Lord was mad at us. It was to show us that we're in a change of day. We're in a new season. The church age, as we've known it, has come to an end and we're entering into the kingdom age. You know, and that is different. We have a new wineskin, a new operation of God, new methods. Okay. It's not that people aren't going to be saved. It's not that we're going to not do the work of the gospel as we've known it. It's just being taken up to a new and different level with do new and different methods and strategies. And that when God shut up at the same time, it was our time to burn the ships of what we did yesterday. Because how we ministered yesterday, the FIFO ministries function as of yesterday of the church age will not work in the kingdom age that's unfolding right now. The FIFO ministry and the whole body of Christ needs to come up into the glory realm of God. You know, and as we come up into that glory realm, we're going to function differently. We're going to talk differently. We're going to speak differently. And the pure holy love of God is going to fill us, finish us, change us, and knit us together and form us into a wheel within a wheel. That's right. An army of the Lord. It's a new, yes, it's a new era. It's a new time. And that's why many of the church leaders today are are afraid of what I'm sharing of this message of the kingdom of God and the change in the shift because we're so used to doing things one way. We can't possibly believe that God would end it and bring something new. But if you take a look at the Bible, there are 65 books of the Bible that we have lived in. But the last book of the Bible is a complete shift and change. The last book of the Bible is called the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why would we need a revelation of Jesus Christ when we already know him? Because in the book of Revelation is the finishing work of God, the Omega God, the finishing chapters. And they're not like the first 65 chapters, the books. The first 65 books were foundations to get us to this point, the entrance of the, the, the millennial reign of Jesus and that, will come, that which will come after it. It's a completely different age and it's unfolding. Two ages are here at the same time, the church age and the kingdom age. Just like there was a leadership of Saul and the leadership of David, they existed at the same time. But what was happening is Saul's ministry and it was coming to an end, just like the church age is coming to an end. And David's ministry and David's kingdom was now to take, take authority over Israel. And so is the Lord Jesus Christ coming to take complete headship over his body of those that will surrender to it. It's a new wine. It's a new wine skin. Exactly, brother. As that's why we can't cling to yesterday or to the past. You see, I, I've been sharing this series about Amos 9-11, and I, I thought about that the other day, 9-11, 9-1-1. Wow, Amos, not, why 9-1-1? Because that's the emergency number. And when the Lord said, when God spoke to Amos and when and Peter in Acts chapter, I forgot which one, 14, wherever it is, you know, he said the Lord was going to restore the ruins of the tabernacle of David and bring it back. He didn't say he was going to restore the tabernacle of Moses or the temple of Solomon. He said, in that day, I'm going to restore the tabernacle of David. And so we, we, we ended yes on, to, on Tuesday that there, there was two tabernacles existing at the same time, the one of Moses and the one of David. Moses' tabernacle represented the old order, the old order of worship with its regulations and all the things that in its ritual acts of worship. But David's, David's tabernacle was a simple, simple thing. It was the ark of God, which symbolized the presence of God and the glory of the Lord, surrounded by a plain, ordinary tent. And it was open for the people to come and minister to the Lord, which was unlawful under Moses' tabernacle. Only the priests could go before that ark. So David was chosen to change the order of worship. 
Moses got the pattern of the of 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 of, of building his tabernacle from heaven, the exact tabernacle. You enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart, you enter his courts with praise. There was an outer court, there was a holy place, and then with the holy of holies. David takes the holy of holies out. <laughs> The, the ark, which represents the Holy of Holy, out from Moses' tabernacle, and he moves it to a completely different place for everyone to come to. The ritual acts of worship ended. And true, pure, holy worship to the Lord from God and his people was established under David. He appointed 3,000 singers, dancers, musicians, priests, scribes, prophets, prophetesses, handmaidens, and men servants to minister to the Lord fully. And why did David do that? Why did God allow David to do that? And what does that have to do with this day and for this hour? Amen. It's Acts 15, 16. In that day, I will restore the tabernacle of David. Now, most of you know that at the end of the last year, God spoke to me to do what he called divine convergences. They are not services. They are not conferences. What are they, okay, and why are they needed? That's what this broadcast is, to show us how the Lord is taking us from services to gatherings. And what should the gatherings be when we come together with the Lord? I believe that's why everything stopped a year ago. Why people, you couldn't even go into your church building, you had to do services online or whatever you did, but he stopped it to get our attention. He allowed it to be stopped to get our attention because he wanted to bring a change. And I believe in March, 2020 was the dawning that daylight hours of the kingdom of God age to manifest so that many would see it and see the difference between the church age and the kingdom age. Now, if you're watching this broadcast for the first time and you are hearing these terms for the first time, it's not gonna make a lot of sense to you. If you really wanna know, you can go to our web website, www.flameofire2007.org. And if you go on there, you and you, if you go to the um, media section, you will see we have our Facebook page and our YouTube page, and all the videos are are, are are on that. You can go right to that page, and you'll go right to the video page. And if you're really interested, you'll see there's a whole year's worth of video teaching. Maybe the Holy Spirit will show you which one to listen to, pick one out, and just pray and ask the Lord. And you, I explain and teach the difference of this third day that we're in. This new era, this new kingdom wineskin. I spent a lot of time by the Lord, with the Lord, sharing about the new kingdom wineskin, which is to prepare us, position us, and propel us with the glory of the Lord. Now, since then, the Lord had me begin to start teaching on this series called The Restoration of the Glory of David's Tabernacle. And so, as and we need to understand why did David do what he did? And why is David's tabernacle? that which needs to be restored. Every time Israel fell away from the Lord, what did they do? They brought in false gods, they brought in the ways of the world, and they worshiped other gods in the very temple of God. What has the church done in this last days, in this Laodicean age? Have we not tried to bring in the things of the world and put strangers and foreigners and foreign things to minister to the holy things of God? Haven't we tried to figure out how to relate to the world? how to reach the world on their terms instead of reaching them on God's terms. And so the movement of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, even in churches that were birthed from Azusa Street with the baptism of the Holy Spirit in California, no longer even allow you to speak and sing in tongues in the, in the sanctuaries. You have to go to the back room to speak in tongues because it might be offensive to people. Now, that's as far stretched from when I got saved back in the 80s and filled with the Holy Spirit. It was open. You sang in tongues. You prophesied in tongues. The things of the Spirit were welcomed. Now they're not so welcomed anymore in our services. Our services have become like a, I don't know what you want to call it, but they become a canned order of worship. We know exactly what we're going to do, how long we're going to preach, the number of songs we're going to sing, you know, uh, you know the, the, the announcements, the messages, you know, the offerings. And we do the same ritual acts of worship Sunday and Wednesday and Sunday and Wednesday. God touches people there. God heals people there. God delivers people there. <coughs> we meet the Lord there. But what that cannot do is finish us and complete us. 
and Hebrews chapter 9 says so. And I'm going to start where I left off yesterday in Hebrews chapter 9 because you have to read this on the Amplified because this is a very powerful revelation from the Lord. I believe this is hidden manna that we need to understand. Because when we understand what, the, what he's writing about, you'll understand the difference between Moses' tabernacle and David's tabernacle. You'll understand that David came to initiate a new day, a new era. The reign of God, the government of God to be established on the earth through a king, prophet, and priest. David functioned as a priest, as a prophet, as a king. And God chose him. And we talked yesterday, why did God choose David? You know, I, I hear a, a lot of teaching that, you know, if you want to be raised up in ministry, you got to be faithful to that to the preacher or the minister that and serve them and 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 um you know, clean the toilet, scrub all those things and prove your faithfulness. And that's, there's a truth to that. There's a truth. Be faithful with little, you'll be trusted with much. But it limits God on who he's going to choose if we do, if we have that thinking. Now, David, what was he faithful to? Being a shepherd. He was the outcast of all the brothers. Samuel had to ask Jesse, do you have any more sons? Jesse didn't even tell him about David. Why was David different than his brothers? Where was David trained? Where was David equipped? Who trained David? Who equipped David? God. That's right. The, the Lord taught David how to minister to him. He was known as a sweet psalmist of Israel. He sang to the Lord. He loved God. He ministered to the Lord. And this man was alone with God. He had much time to be alone with the Lord being a shepherd. And in that place, his love for God developed, his worship for God developed. And when God said, I'm going to choose for myself a king, who did he choose? A worshiper, a worshiper and a lover. That's right. And that worshiper lover became a mighty man of war. So worship and warfare and loving the Lord. Can you see the thread? how they're tied together and who God is picking in these last days and the change of the guard and the change of the leadership that Lord has to bring to the church. God has many Eliabs and there are many Sauls. And in some places in the body of Christ, we've had a Saulish leadership, you know, ruling over the church, lording over the church, actually through a religious structure and system, burying many Beautiful people of God, bearing them under the weight of religious structure, of proving your worth, proving your value, proving your ministry. Even though they say they don't do it, that's exactly what the structure does. They have to prove themselves. Instead of becoming something in the Lord, instead of growing in the Lord and becoming a man or woman after God's home, we have produced workers, employees, and many in the church see God as their employer. And have an employer-employee relationship. God, I'll do this for you when you do this for me. And, 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 and they demand a paycheck. God, I did this. You need to do this for me. David was not an employer, an employee of the Lord. He was a lover of the Lord. He was a worshiper of the Lord. He wrote those Psalms. He sang those Psalms. And God noticed him. He was alone and God noticed him. I said he was alone and God noticed him. His ministry to God, his love for God touched God's heart so that when God wanted to choose for himself a king, look who he chose. He bypassed Eliab, who Samuel thought, this surely is the Lord's anointed. And the Lord says, he's not it. Man looks at the outside, but God looks at the inside. And that's exactly how many people have risen up in leadership today by other men seeing them on the outside and God not choosing them at all. We have put many Eliabs in positions in the body of Christ, calling them apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists who were never chosen by the Lord. They were chosen by man because of their charisma or their giftings or their natural giftings or whatever they had. And very few of them are true worshipers of the Lord. I'm not trying to be you know, disparaging here. I'm just telling you. God has many workers but few lovers. And he has, out of the lovers, he has few less that are in lovers with the Lord. Many are called, few are chosen. David 
when he was about to establish the government of God upon the earth, realize there is no government without God's presence. There's no government without God's glory. There's no, there's no government without the acknowledgement of God being with us. Moses said it, Lord, don't take us up from here because if your presence doesn't go before us, how are the nations of the world going to know that we're your people? Moses valued God's presence. David valued God's presence. I think today in the church, we value God's work and his power more than him and more than his presence, more than being with him. I'm not saying we're not to do the work. God forbid. I'm saying that, but from that presence, God does the work. From that glory, God works in you and through you. We were never to be, be, become disconnected from our first love. It's the first correction in Revelation chapter two is that we deserted God, our first love. And he notice he says, I know your works. They're more numerous than they were at the beginning. And you even tried them that say they're apostles and are not are imposters and liars. But nevertheless, I have this one charge against you, right? You deserted me. The love that you should have for me, for me at first. Saul deserted, King Saul desert, deserted that love for God. And he replaced it with the approval of men. He was more concerned about what men thought of him, how men received him. And everything he did was before men. And that's what led to his downfall and his rejection because he was more concerned about how men viewed him instead of how God viewed him. David had no concern how men, men viewed him. He stripped down to his basically underwear to dance before the Lord. And Michael's wife rebuked him and she became barren. David was not ashamed of his relationship with God and he wasn't ashamed of God and he wasn't concerned about the people's needs first. He was concerned about David's, uh, about God's needs first. That's why God allows him to change the order of worship. Why is this so important? Because every time Israel went apostate away from the Lord, God would raise up a righteous king like Josiah and others that would come in. And the first thing they did was remove the idols that were in the temple of God. And they tore down the Asherah poles. And the first thing they did was restore the worship of David. They restored the worship of David. The seeking and the presence of the Lord became the priority. The first thing they did to bring change to the nation was to restore the seeking of the presence and the glory of God. And yet here in America, we'll pray on the steps of the capitals and of Washington, D.C. We'll do everything that we can to try to change the government, to try to pray and change things. But what we won't do is change our order or change our direction, even in our services and in our ministries, that seeking God and teaching people how to find God is the priority of the kingdom of God, the first priority. We'd rather do works for God then be with God. So we have raised up a generation of workers instead of lovers of God or in lovers with God. And we wonder why our nations are in the state that they are right now and why the governments are being given over to demonic powers. Because we gave up that space. We gave up that spiritual atmosphere. We traded it for work, working for God, to do things in the name of the Lord instead of with the Lord, in the name of the Lord, for the Lord instead of with the Lord. And because we've done that, we have lost the sense of his glory and we lost the sense of his presence. We may have a little, we may have a little bit of presence in our services or in what we're doing, but the glory of God is not seen. Why? Because the glory of God is not welcome. That's why. And the glory of God, listen, will never be established in the outer courts or in the holy place. The glory of God is behind the veil. And he expects us to go behind that veil. It's been torn in two for a reason so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, right? We can come boldly before the Lord. Our destination is the, is the throne, not the cross. The cross is the doorway to the, to the throne room because the Lord wants us to be seated with him where? In heavenly places. He wants us to be able to rule with him as kings and priests unto our God. And you can't do that at the cross, you do that at the throne. The throne is what gives you the access, the forgiveness, the mercy, the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, but no one comes to the Father except through me. But the destination is still the Father's heart, to know the Father, to be the Father, to live for the Father's will as Jesus did. This is why this is so important. This is why this is so urgent. 
and why the church and the leaders and the five ministers have to recognize that even the way we do services, okay, is not the pattern of the true worship of David. It's not. Matter of fact, you won't even find the word in the Bible, services. Where did it come from? How did it get to, to what we do? It's just been handed down from generation to generation. There's no spontaneousness to the services anymore. They're pre-planned, pre-packaged, even the worship. And I call it canned. They're, it's canned. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know the time it's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen. You know that we're going to have a time of worship, maybe fast songs, slow songs. Then there might be a, you know, a, a prayer or there might be a testimony time or there may be a, a time for the announcements or the commercials. And then there's a time of offerings. And then there's time of preaching, a set message. And then there's a time of praying and everybody goes home and everybody sits and takes notes. But you notice they hardly participate because there's no place for them to participate. There's no room for them to participate. The gifts that they are, even for them to step into the prophetic and the apostolic is so limited because the ministers are doing all the work and everybody else listens. We got the five ministry up here. These big, huge stones, foundation stones are on top of God's people. And I said this before. And what do, what do big stones do to smaller stones? They crush them. And that's why so many saints are buried. That's why so many people have left the church. That's why so many people had to go home and find the Lord on their own because that system, not people, the system, the structure of the old order, so to speak, is crushing them. And so they can't function. Now, in the divine convergence of God said, he told me to gather God's people, those that will listen. It's almost like Luke chapter 14. He said, Henry, I'm preparing a table. All things are ready. Now go to the invited ones and tell them all things are now ready, come. And just like in Luke chapter 14, the invited ones, one by one, they make excuses. I can't come, I got a job, I got a house, and I got a family. I can't come, let me come later. And when that message came back to the master of the peace, he was angry and he sent his servant where? Out into the highways and the byways, into the streets to compel them to come. And they came and the house was full and yet there was more room. So he sent the messenger out a second time. And, and for the Lord desires his house to be full. But he says, I swear in my wrath that those that are invited will never taste my supper. That's the marriage supper. That's the season of the Lord that we're in right now. Where the Lord is come and he's revealing himself as the king of glory in Revelation chapter one through four, changing us. His voice is different. It's a war trumpet voice. His countenance is different. John doesn't even recognize him. John, John the beloved begins to see the answer of Jesus prayer in John chapter 17. He says, Father, I pray that those that you've given me would see me in the glory that I had before the foundation of the world. See, the glory that I had before the foundation of the world. So that's why when Jesus manifests in Revelation chapter 1 to John, John doesn't know that voice, doesn't recognize it, and he doesn't recognize Jesus because Jesus is not coming as he has known him before. He's coming to be revealed as the Omega God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, the Lamb and the Lion are seen. That's why Jesus is so described to be different. Eyes of fire, hair as white as snow, face shining like the noonday sun, a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth, seven stars in his right hand, and his feet burning like fire. John had not seen Jesus like that. That's why the last book of called the last book of the Bible is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ, because it's a new day, it's a new era, and it's our destiny. It's where God desired to bring his people from the beginning to this place, because it's the beginning of the transformation of this earth from the kingdom of our God of this world to become the kingdom of our God in Christ. And, for, and he's going to rule for a thousand years in, in a millennial reign. We're at that season. So everything's different. Everything's changed. But the church and many leaders in the church aren't, won't see it yet, can't hear it yet, won't taste it yet, because they, they are so consumed with the Great Commission, they're making the, the Great Omission, is that the Great Commission is taken up into a different place in the book of Revelation. How God is going to bring in the harvest, how God is going to minister, what the Lord is going to do to heal, to deliver, to set free is different in the book of Revelation than it is in any other chapters of the New Testament. Because it's a different work, it's a different operation, if it's a different season, and the defeat of the enemy is imminent, is imminent. 
And so in the book of Revelation, we see the armies of the Lord. We see God, Jesus as the commander in chief of the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the angel armies, that which Ezekiel saw, that which Isaiah saw, you know, and those revelations that Daniel saw are all coming to be fulfilled now. And it's different than what we have known. And we're going to function differently and live differently and act differently and teach differently and minister differently. That's why God shut everything down, allowed everything to be shut down last year. And if that's just happening in your nation now, my brother, then there's a reason for it. There's a reason. It's for us to stop, look, and listen. It's time for us to say, God, what we have done has ended. Lord, show me now what you want me to do. Show us now, Lord. And when we gather together in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says, everybody have something, a song, a hymn, a teaching, a doctrine. It was never supposed to be one person or guest speakers doing all the work. God intended his body to be used. Every single one of them to have a part and a place of the building up of the entire body. They have a usefulness to God, a functionality to God's purposes that we need. But the church religious structure of services and how we do ministry actually inhibits the whole body from functioning. It may enable some that we consider gifted and talented, but the rest of the body gets lost. And we wonder why they don't want to come. And we wonder why, because why? Because maybe they're tired of doing the same thing week after week and Sunday after Sunday. Maybe they want more than that. And those that want more than that have left that church structure and they went home to their prayer closet to meet with the Lord. They went on the internet to find other people who are, God is doing the same thing. And they've also found ministers that are, Bible ministry that are outside the camp or the church structure, as it says in Song of Solomon, chapter one. Shepherds outside the camp that can point them the way to the Lord, to the Holy of Holies. And the church has labeled those people rebellious, not under authority, you know, um, you know, that, you know, they they don't have anybody over them. That's not true. They have Jesus over them and they have an accountability to other brothers and sisters and maybe other FIFO ministers that are not of that church mode structure anymore. And there's a mutual accountability. They're not rebellious. I've met many of them. Many of them are watching this broadcast. And when you hear them, they, they don't speak evil to the church. They're not against authority. They just see its condition. They've been on their faces. They're the birthing mamas and the papas that have been in their prayer closet praying for the manifestation of the sons of God to be fully manifested. They're not rebellious. They've been praying for you, with you. They just couldn't stay in a structure that would restrict them and stifle them but they are the hidden ones of God, trained by God, just like David, prepared just like David for this time to be joined with the Bible ministry in a new mature way in the glory realm of God. And that's why I said the Bible ministers can no longer look at the people of God with natural eyes. They need to see the people of God through the spirit's eyes, the way God sees them, to recognize we're not to know any man after the flesh and after the spirit. So in a divine convergence, we don't know everybody who's coming. But God does. And you should see what the Lord did. When we, the Lord told me to do the convergence, it, and he said, there's no agenda. There's no, don't invite guest speakers. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit would be the guest speakers. He said, just minister to me, bring them to me, and let them love me. Make it about me. So we did that in Florida, and we did it in Colorado, and we're about to do it in Plymouth, Massachusetts. And the people that came, all we did was seek the face of God individually. We played music where each person could get alone with God. And they took their Bibles and their pads and they listened. And the glory of God came in our midst. The king of glory came in our midst. And they were changed. They were healed. They were delivered. Nobody laid hands on them or prayed over them. There was very little of that, a little bit more in Colorado, but very little. Because God was meeting his people themselves. And everyone got to share what God was giving them. And what they said, somebody said, that's exactly what, you don't know how I needed to hear that. You don't know how that strengthened me. And the body built itself up in love. It's what you as a pastor have so desired to see happening in your church. But because of the structure of the order of worship of Moses' tabernacle, we can't get there. 
There's no room for the Lord to allow his body to build up. There's a time frame. There's a time structure. There's all the things that limit God from being able to touch and change his people. We want them to be touched and changed by the message. God wants, God wants them to be touched and changed by the messenger. Not just the message, but the messenger. Jesus. The spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ, not the testimony of your ministry or your work. It's a testimony of Jesus. This is so important that we understand the transition. David was a transitional figure in church history and God's people history to take them from one place to another. God trusted this man to change the order of worship, the way we approach God, the way we see God, the way we minister God. He made seeking God the center of the universe for Israel that there was nothing that was going to happen in Israel without 24 hour day, 365 days a year, ministry and worship to God. Seeking God, seeking his presence, honoring him was gonna be the foundation for him to set, for the Lord to use him to set up a governmental structure to rule over Israel. But he knew he was not the ruler of Israel, God was. I think we forget that sometimes that we are not the ruler over God's people. God is. David was the instrument, the priest, the prophet and king that knew how to minister to the heart of God. And that which he learned as a boy, that which he learned in his secret place, God took and made it open. He took what, the, what God put in this man in secret and took that which was in secret and brought it out into the open for all of Israel to see what a man after God's own heart looks like. And that is the leadership God is raising up for this day. Men and women that have a heart after God, men and women that love God and passionately with God, that know God, that know the value of being with him, that they won't move without him. They won't talk without him. They won't, they inquire continually of the Lord. They meditate. They gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, the sweet attractiveness of the Lord. And they, and they behold him in that time with God. And in that time with God, God speaks to them. God shows them, God fills them, God changes them, God prepares them. And they know the very God that they serve is real because he made himself known to them. And in that day, Jesus will come, 2 Thessalonians 1.10, and he shall be seen glorified in his saints. That's where we are right now. And that's why the convergences are a, is a transitional tool to take us from services to the glory realm of ministering before the Lord. And that's why I'm not advertising them. I put them on my Facebook page. That's it. That's the only place I'm not trying to, I could boost it, I'm not. I could send it out to the, the hundreds on my email list, I'm not doing it. Uh, because this is a call for people to hear God for themselves. I can't make anybody come to this convergence, God has to call. But my prayer is that that call will go far and wide to the nations and they will begin to want to come just to be in a set apart time for the Lord, so that the Lord can be seen, the Lord could be heard, the Lord can give them divine instructions, blueprints, plans, change them, give them what they need for their life, for their family, for their ministry, and then collectively as a body, we can begin to hear what does the Lord want us to do collectively? Like separate onto me, Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have for them. That came from the spirit of God. Notice they would always say in the book of S and the Holy Spirit said, 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 not preacher so-and-so said, but the Holy Spirit said. They understood this dynamic. They understood that it takes time to minister to God. They understood that if any governmental order and structure, power, dominion, and authority is going to be established, we can never do it apart from the presence and glory of God. Moses knew it. David knew it. Abraham knew it. Do we know it? Wow. Thank you, Lord. In the divine convergence, okay, what do we do? We just come and sit at his feet. And as, maybe you're a handmaiden or a men's servant. What's a handmaiden? What's a men's servant? I'm just going to follow the flow of the spirit of God. I, I, had some, I thought I'm going one way, but I'm just going to follow the Lord this way. A man's servant is someone that is so in love with the Lord that they would go to the altar of the Lord and they would break that alabaster box of oil like Mary did upon the feet of Jesus. Their love for the Lord, that ministry to the Lord 
is real and pure, and they pour it out at his feet, man or woman. When those men servants and handmaidens minister the Lord in their function, you should see what happens. We really had that in our Navarre gathering. A brother and sister stepped out, and when they ministered that heart to the Lord, oh my God, the glory of God came. I couldn't even move. There are so many handmaidens and men servants in the church that would just love to come to that altar and just minister to the heart of God. There's no place for them in the church service. Nope. We got the singers and we got the musicians. You know, in some churches, you're not even allowed to come to the altar in worship. But what if God wanted them there? What if as the singers and musicians were psalmists? instead of just singers and musicians? What if they were able to sing the new song to the Lord? What if there was no time restriction that we stayed in worship Lord until he released us to move elsewhere? And what if God's people were welcome to come and to pour their love upon his feet, not from their chair, but at the very altar of the Lord? You would begin to see the handmaidens and men servants that God has placed in your church or in your ministry. They would see their function. They would see that God would come and inhabit their praise and their worship. And we'd have a deeper dimension of glory in our midst. Imagine instead of just singing songs that we get off K-Love or the hottest Christian songs from the radio. And instead we had musicians that just knew how to play their instruments. Wait on the Lord and then sing when God tells them to sing. Or if they do choose a song, God shows them what song to sing. And they minister it just to the Lord, that they're no longer facing the people. We don't put them facing the people, but we turn them maybe sideways to make them face like where the Lord is. And they actually face and sing their songs to God and not to people. They sing their hearts and their music to the Lord. And they sing prophetically and they release those songs. What would happen if a song of deliverance or a prophetic song came that would so overwhelm the people of God that they would fall on their faces in tears? like happened to me in Toronto. They sang this one song. It was a, a, a spontaneous song given to Joanne McFadden called the Gethsemane song. When they sang that song, it was a song about Jesus at Gethsemane, you know, asking the father to take the cup from him. It was so powerful, so real, the dialogue. I fell on my face. I didn't move. And I didn't get up the whole entire meeting. I hardly heard the message. I was undone. God's song, that song brought deliverance to me. God began to wreck me, change me because they knew how to minister to the heart of God. We don't even have the idea, our understanding of what it truly means to minister to the Lord. We've lost it. We replaced it with a ritual act of worship. That's what Hebrews 9 says. And as long as a holy place, it says in Hebrews 9, remains a recognized institution and still standing within it, offerings are given, ritual acts of worship are given. It says it blocks the true way into the holy holies. It says the Holy Spirit points out as long as a holy place ministry, which is what we've done in church services, remains a recognized institution. It blocks the true, blocks people from entering into the, the holy of holies. And it says it can't finish them and, and it says, and the holy place ministry is incapable of perfecting or bringing to completion the conscience of a believer. They can't be finished in the holy place. They can't be finished in a, in a church service structure that we have done for how many years now. We must come into the new wineskin of the Lord. And the tabernacle of David is the instrument God wants to use to establish his governmental order upon the earth where God's glory and his presence is the first thing that we seek, the seek ye first the kingdom of God. David understood it. It was so important that when, when David recognized where the ark was, God put in his desire to take that ark and bring it back to the midst of Jerusalem. And, he, and when he did, David changed the order of worship. Why didn't Saul? You know, King Saul tried to put on that priestly robe. When Samuel didn't come seven days, he took on the role of priest and he slaughtered that sacrifice and he got rebuked. Why didn't you wait for me? He took it upon himself to take the place of a priest. And when God never gave it to him, God gave David that priesthood. He changed the order of worship and he, and he chose David from a different tribe to, to be able to institute the true and pure worship of God. Why is that important? 
King David. I said this yesterday. David Swan states, King David knew the importance of the Ark of God. To have the Ark close to him in Jerusalem meant having the blessing, the protection, and the presence of God. The ark is a symbol of God's throne upon the earth. Jesus is that ark, isn't he? And he is the symbol. He is the glory. And we beheld that glory and that glory became flesh. They testified. And he is the symbol of God's glory because he is God. And he is glory. He is the king of glory. The Lord of hosts. We're going to, the Lord told me in, 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 in our convergence and here in Florida that we were going to meet him as our bridegroom king. And then he said, I want you to go to Colorado and I want you to meet me there as the king of glory. And he did. And tonight at seven o'clock, you can listen to a few people who came to these convergences and how the Lord actually changed their life and revealed himself this way. In Plymouth, Massachusetts, he's going to reveal himself to us as the Lord of hosts, which is the last part of Psalm 24. And that is so important. Now, there has been, we've heard teaching about the restoration of David's tabernacle for years. And some churches and ministries have tried to start prayer movements and worship movements, you know, like the Moravians and God was God is in that. But the impact that has had upon the church, I honestly, has been very little, very little. They're just pockets. David's first attempt to bring the ark ended in failure with the death of Uzziah in 2 Samuel 6, 8. David carried the ark aside into the house of Obed-Edom, Obed 2 Samuel 6, 10. The ark, the, God blessed the house of Obed-Edom because of the ark. And it was told to King David, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom Obed into the city of David with gladness, 2 Samuel 6, 12. David brought the ark, its journey. It was 20 years at the house of Obed-Edom, by the way. You know, it was at 20, no, excuse me, it was at, it was at 20 years. It was not in Jerusalem until King Saul was completely removed. As soon as Saul's ministry and reign ended, David was now free to bring that ark, you know, into Jerusalem. And David brought the ark and placed it under a tent in Zion. Now the ark would remain in Zion all throughout the tabernacle of Moses, although the the tabernacle of Moses was still in Silo. The tabernacle of Moses was in Silo. Remember, for 20 years, you know, the ark of God would remain. God forsook the tabernacle of Silo, Psalm 78, 60. He chose instead the tribe of Judah and Zion. He chose the tribe of Judah, which means praise, and he chose Zion, the place of praise. This is an important transition. That's what I'm trying to share with you because that's why the Lord is reestablishing the tabernacle of David. The way we come and minister to the Lord. I've been spending a lot of time upon it. I'm not trying to say, you know, this is just a new form or a new structure or something to do differently so that we can continue to do what we're doing. No, what I'm saying is that David transitioned God's people from the tabernacle of Moses to the glory realm. He took them from the tabernacle of Moses where only the priest could enter once a year into that, that Holy of Holies, to taking the Holy of Holies and bring it out to establish the glory realm of God, where the people could come and minister the Lord and God would be glorified. He chose the tribe of Judah and Zion, Psalm 78, 68. This is an important transition. God was no longer dwelling, listen to this, in the midst of animal sacrifices. That was the old pattern of worship. But he was going to be glorified in the midst of praise, which represented Zion. Hebrews chapter nine testifies of this. And it says here, I want to skip down to Hebrews chapter nine, verse six. 
These arrangements have thus been made. The priest habitually enters into the outer division of the tabernacle. Now, when he starts teaching about the tabernacle, he doesn't even mention the outer courts because that's where salvation is. This is written to those that are saved. So we don't need the labor. We've already been there. So he's going to talk about two compartments in the tabernacle of Moses, the holy place and the holy of holies. Understanding this is where we begin to see the change from from the tabernacle of Moses to the tabernacle of David, from Saul's leadership to David's leadership. You're going to begin to see that there is a transition between this and the writer of Hebrews teaches us of the transition and why it must happen and why it must happen now. And it says this, these arrangements have thus been made. The priests enter habitually into the outer division of the tabernacle in performance of their ritual acts of worship. Where? The holy place. It had a requirement, things to be tended to. And so that holy place ministry represents a ritual act of worship. May I ask you a question, Pastor? What's your service going to look like on Sunday? I mean, structurally wise. Or your meeting or your home meeting. How long is it going to last? What are you going to do? What's it going to look like? Okay. You know, it did last Sunday last Wednesday or Thursday looked like the Sunday before. You may say, no, because I preached a different message. No, it looks exactly the same. Because I, I would assume in 99% of the cases, maybe less, that it was not, it was planned and pre-planned with what, you, what we needed to do in it. There was a time of singing, maybe first. The first thing we did was sing and minister to the Lord. And we had a time frame for it, okay? Uh, the worship team practiced, if you had a worship team, they practiced their songs and they sang them, but there was very little presence of the Lord. And then maybe we had a little bit of presence of the Lord. And then at the right time, pastor, you came and you took the microphone and you welcomed the people. Everybody sat down or you had somebody get up there and welcome the people. And maybe the announcements were next. So the commercials and everybody heard all the stuff that we're going to do as a body of believers. Then perhaps an offering. The structure may change. You may have other things in there like testimonies and special songs and stuff like that. But it fits within this structure. And then after the offering, okay, we sing over the offering and then we sometimes sing another song. And I was taught this and I said this, you know, okay, we need to, let's, let's get back the presence of the Lord. Let's welcome him. And when the Lord stopped me from doing this system, he said, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you putting announcements? Why are you taking the offering there? And why do you have to ask me to come back when I'm already here? I said, wow. It wasn't the best thing to do financially because we saved the, fi the, <laughs> the, the offerings to the end. And most people would leave by then and didn't give an offering. So it's in the middle because that's when most people are there. And we want to make sure we get that offering because we need it for the work of the Lord. I hate to say that, but that's what a lot of the motive is sometimes. And then the man, whoever, guest speaker, has to bring the people a message who sit there like this, taking notes. Wow, hallelujah, praise God, isn't that great? And they are good teachings. They are, for the most part. <laughs> you know, they may give us information, instructions, a word, but notice that word is for everybody. It's not a personal word, like in a convergence where each person hears the Lord individually and then they share what they have and that part strengthens the other body. No, if we're getting a word from the Lord that the man prayed about, got from the Lord, and this is what the whole congregation needs. And then afterwards we have prayer. That, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a ritual act of worship from the holy place ministry. And it gifts are offered, the gifts of the spirit. There may be prophecy, there may be tongues, there may be praying, there may be healing, deliverance. All those function in the holy place. And it's a ritual act of worship with a time frame, a schedule, okay? 10 to 11, next service, 11.30 to one, next service, five to six, or 11 to one. And why do we do that? Because we say people can't handle more than that. People can't handle more of that. And so we have a generation of Christians who can't handle more of God. And we taught them it was okay not to handle it. It was more important for them to get home for dinner or to watch their football game or get home and do their family activities than it was to spend time as, as long as 
God needed us to be with him. That's what we taught them. And so many pastors blame the people. Why not? Why aren't, you know, I call for prayer and only 10 people out of the hundred show up. Why? Because we taught them to devalue. We taught them to devalue the presence of God. We taught them that it wasn't important. We taught them that time was theirs instead of God's. We instructed them wrong. We built something upside down that God has to make right side up. We didn't do it on purpose. I taught it because that's what I knew. That's what I was taught in Bible school, you know? And so this is what we do. I'm not blaming anybody, but we did it not realizing the consequences of those things. People were getting saved. People were getting healed. But what they weren't doing was growing. What they weren't doing is become fathers and teachers and, and functioning. They were good pew sitters. They may even be great workers in the church. But very few had an intimate and deep relationship with God. They were employees and st- under their employer. And we gave them promotion as they were faithfulness to serve us in our work of the Lord. You can be faithful to men and not be faithful to God. But every man that's faithful to God will always be faithful to men. We have many people, and I chose people who are faithful to men, and they never lasted in ministry because they weren't faithful to God in their first work and their first ministry. Praise God. I'm about to wrap up here, though. It says, now, these arrangements have thus been made. The priest enters habitually into the outer division. I'm reading this on the Amplified Bible, so you really need to get the Amplified to the tabernacle and performance of their ritual act of worship. But into the second division or the tabernacle, which is the Holy of Holies, none but the high priest goes. And he only goes once a year and never without taking the sacrifice of blood with him, which he offers for himself and the errors and the sins and the thoughtlessness the people have committed. So the Holy of Holies was limited to a one-time experience, one time of year. And only one person could go there. Did you hear what I just said? Only one person can minister from there. Why is that not so in David's tabernacle? When David takes that same ark that's behind that veil that's in in Moses' tabernacle and he pitches a tent around it, why now can singers and dancers and musicians and flags and scribes and handmaidens and men servants and all of Israel come to minister to the Lord? Why isn't it one person anymore? Thank you, Lord. Now, verse 8. This is where I'm going to wrap up. Verse 8 and 9 are really important to show us the difference between Moses' tabernacle and David's tabernacle and why the Lord had David bring that, to bring the ark back and make a place for it and for God's people to be with the Lord and the Lord to be with his people. It says, by this, the Holy Spirit, verse 8, points out that the way Look at this, into the true holy of holies. The way into the true holy of holies. That means the experience of it, the glory realm. Seeing what John sees in Revelation chapter one, experiencing the Lord in his glory, being changed from glory to glory, beholding his face as in a mirror. It says those that behold his face in a mirror are constantly being changed from glory to glory. Why don't we see the glory of God in our gatherings? People experience at home, But in our gatherings, why don't we experience the glory of God? Because it's right here in the book of Hebrews. It says, by this, the Holy Spirit points out that the way into the truly of holy of holies is not yet thrown open as long. And this is powerful as the former or the outer petition, the holy place ministry with its ritual acts of worship remains a recognized institution and still standing. So what does God do with David, the worshiper, the man after God's own heart, the one that knew how to minister the heart of God, a man after God's own heart? He allows this man to take the ark from Moses' tabernacle and bring it into Jerusalem near him. And he knew to pitch a tent so that the people could come and meet with the Lord. No longer was Silo and the table of Moses, the place where God was going to meet his people. It changed to here. Do you see the parallel? 
Do you understand why the, in, in Acts it says that in that day the Lord has to restore the tabernacle of David? Because in the in the reestablishment of David's tabernacle of worship and mystery of the Lord, the glory of God will be seen and known. In that tabernacle worship, when we come and gather together in the name of the Lord, with the Lord, and just minister to the Lord, he is the agenda, he's the destination, he's the purpose, no other agenda but to be with him and to hear from him and be with him and receive his instructions and his blueprints together as a body of Christ. Then he has an abode, he has a resting place where he can come. And he does come and he comes with his glory. You ask those that came to these convergences, if they didn't experience the glory of God, they will tell you, come tonight at seven o'clock, you will hear testimony of how they ministered, how the glory of God changed their life. Not Pastor Henry, not Flame of Fire, but how they met God personally and how their lives were changed and accelerated. I would pray, apostle, pastor, teacher, evangelist, you would want this for your people. We think the only way they're going to grow is by us preaching at them, by us giving them these great revelations from the Lord that are dependent upon them hearing from us as the middleman between them and the Lord instead of teaching them how to get to God themselves. The Lord told me, Henry, I don't want you to build a church. I don't want you to build a ministry. I want you to establish the kingdom of God in men's heart. I want you to take their hand, lift them up into my hand. And when they get a hold of that hand, let go and get out of the way. That's what it should be. But our idea of sonship as our sons that are faithful to you, faithful to your work, faithful to your ministry and serving you, that is a small degree of sonship. Real sonship is to the degree of how they have relationship was with God. How are they a son to God? I have a beautiful pastor friend that I've known for many years, over 30 years that God sent me to. And when we talk about the Lord, he says and he cries, I just want to be a faithful son. I don't care about the ministry. I don't care about position or place. And he means it. I just want to be with tears. I just want to be a faithful son. I want to minister to God's heart. I want God to be pleased with my life that what my life is, is a reflection of his life. And God loves that man. He, God showed me him in, a, in, in, in an open vision before I even met him and said, this is a man after my own heart. This is my David. And when I talked to him 30 something years later, he is still that man. The priority is the same. It's passionate and love with Jesus. His talk together is not about all the works and they have many things that they do from that church. But the heart of it has to be seeking the face of God knowing God, walking in that God, praying, worshiping, ministering to the Lord and his needs. That's what's in this man's heart. He gets opposed for it because there's always those religious that want to go back into the work mode instead of the, the relationship mode first. But it says this, by this, the Holy Spirit points out that the way into the true holy of holies is not yet thrown open as long as the former outer partition remains a recognized institution is still standing. Seeing, and this is the key, that the first portion, the holy place, which is what we've done in our church services, that tabernacle, listen, was a parable, a visible symbol, a type, a picture of this present age. Notice the word in the Amplified, age, church age, then kingdom age. See, I'm trying to show you why we're changing and we're transitioning out of here and how God's glory is going to be seen risen upon you. And what does God want to do to be able for us to arise and shine? How do we, how do we get back to that place where the Lord wants to fill us with that glory? It says, seeing that this first outer petition was a parable, a type of a picture of the present age, in it gifts, what? Gifts of the spirit and sacrifices, our order of worship the ministry, the teachings, okay? Listen, they're offered as a ritual act of worship, but listen to what they can't do. They are yet incapable of perfecting. That word perfection means maturity. They are incapable. The holy place ministry that we do, we put everything into that Sunday morning, that Sunday evening, that Wednesday evening is incapable, listen, of perfecting or finishing the conscious and cleansing and the renewing of the inner man of the worshiper. It can heal them. It can deliver them. 
It can give them gifts, but it cannot finish them. The book of Revelation chapter one through five is Jesus Christ, the King of glory, finishing a people. The testimony of those finishing people is that they are singing a new song. In Revelation six through 10, it says, and he has chosen us out of every tribe and out of every nation. And he's purchased us with his own blood. And he has formed us into a kingdom of kings and priests unto our God, and we will rule and reign with them. The church age ministry structure can never bring that forming. It can never bring forth a royal priesthood and a holy nation because the tools, the equipment are not the tools and equipment and methods of how Jesus, the King of glory and Revelation chapter one is going to finish his people and change us from water to wine. In the book of Revelations, the first five chapters are the spiritual Pentateuch or the Lord told me the glory roadmap. Because in Revelation chapter three, verse 21 says to he that overcomes, I will give him the right to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame and sat down in my father's throne. And then we come into Revelation chapter four, where John hears that voice. He's in the spirit on the Lord's day, but he was caught up higher in the spirit. And he says he hears that same voice speaking to him like a war trumpet. And when he looks up, he sees what a door standing open where in heaven, a upward call, a door standing up in heaven to a higher place. And he hears that voice from up there saying, come up here so I can show you the things that will come hereafter. All of that is a positioning and a preparation. David's tabernacle, the presence of God, the ministry of God is the vehicle that God takes that work of Revelation chapter two and three as we meet with them and he works it within our lives. So transformationally wise that when you go home, you're never the same and he continues the work at home. You're gonna hear that testimony tonight, how at home, from being with God at this convergence, by meeting the King of glory, God is changing them from glory to glory. It's something that lasted, something that they continually are walking in and they're being changed and they're coming deeper and deeper into the heart of God. Isn't that what we want for God's people? Isn't that what you want, beloved? And you can see how important your ministry to the Lord is. If you are home and, 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 and all you can do is sit at his feet and worship him and seek his face and wait on him and ask for his heart, you are doing that work of David's tabernacle. Keep your Bible with you. Keep your pad next to you. Write down what God has to say. But when you come into that place, be expecting God to change you, talk to you, give you instructions of how that glory can change your husband, change your wife, change your children and grandchildren. I'm watching it happen in my own family with my own eyes, not by any of my efforts, just by the seeking of the Lord. God is changing my family, healing my family, healing other families. Why? Because you're carrying a substance of glory. You're carrying a substance of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is in hand. It's in hand. It's manifesting. The kingdom of God is within you. And by you sitting there, by you ministering to the Lord, and even though you may not feel something or seeing something, you're getting a download of glory from heaven that God is depositing in you without you knowing, without you seeing. He's doing it in the secret work of your heart. He's bringing a change and transformation to your life that he's going to use to touch and change and restore and heal and deliver your families and other families and cities and nations and transform the kingdoms of this earth into the kingdoms of our God in Christ. We have to become a personal tabernacle of David so that we can become the collective one. The convergence is, is, is what we do individually to come together. And it's interesting, it's upside down compared to the church age. Because when we come into the convergence, we minister the Lord individually. And then God makes us a corporate expression. First individually, then a corporate. I stand at the door. And if any man, he's not talking the seven churches. Now it's an individual call of any man. Hear my voice and open the door and let me in. I will come in and I will sup with you. The marriage supper with you. I will marry you and you will sup with me. So the individual coming to meet and know the Lord, hearing the Lord, when I do that and you do that and you do that, God at the right moment takes us and forms us into a kingdom. He comes forms us into a body where we function. And now together we hear the Lord. We walk with the Lord together in a way that builds us up in love and unity that is not manufactured by our efforts. It's birthed by the pure, holy love of the Lord. That's what we've experienced in these convergences. And I believe that they're a demonstration 
of how we change from one place to another. And then at this next convergence in, in August 6th to the 11th, we're going to do it for six days, three days of what of just ministering to the Lord and listening. And then I believe from that, God is going to begin to release us, to take that glory and, and have it go to different places and release what he wants to release where he wants it released for the second three days. And I believe it's going to bring a transformational shift to all of our lives, our families, and a new beginning is going to be birthed there at the very birthplace of our nation. So there's a purpose why God is doing these things. I'm doing these broadcasts just to declare it. Maybe it'll take 10 years for somebody to hear it, see it, and it doesn't matter for, for whatever long we have. It's just forerunning. But whatever you're doing at home, understand you're in a new day, that, that your ministry to the Lord, taking your alabaster box of oil and pouring it on Jesus' feet and waiting for him, listening for him, allowing him to change you, transform you, whether you're conscious of it or not. He is equipping you, preparing you, enabling you, delivering you to function in his realm of glory personally and then with all the remnant of God that will receive that same thing. And then he's bringing that, that remnant together by divine convergence to form us into a wheel within a wheel. Fivefold ministers and all the saints of God as one wheel within the wheel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's it for this week. Amen. I, I, I hope this was life-changing to you. Because it's life changing to me and Donna. I I, can't, I wish I could explain it. I'm only sharing what I've experienced and what God is teaching me from the word of God. I want to show you scripturally where these things are and why it was so important for David to take the ark. I pray that today, each one of you that watch this broadcast, I pray such a release, such a strengthening, such an impartation that a new and deeper hunger for Jesus will rise up inside of you a deeper hunger and thirsting to be completed, to be a finished bride would enable you to make yourself ready to go and meet the bridegroom for all things are now ready. May God fill you with the extra oil that you need so that you can go out and meet the bridegroom in this midnight hour season and that you're able to enter into the full marriage supper of the lamb and its reality to be made one with him, truly one with him in heart and purpose as he was in the world, so will you be. The works he did, you shall also do, that you would be one. Father, he said, I pray, and I release this right now, that as the Father is in the Son and the Son is in the Father, that we and them shall be one. That's what Jesus prayed. He said, me and you, Father, and, and you and me, and them and us, that they may be perfectly united. Lord, I pray such a release of your pure, holy love. Ignite it within us for you. Ignite the passionate and love heart for you and make us one with you. Lord, come in. We hear your knock. We say, come in and sup with us and we will sup with you. I pray such a release of your beauty, of your holiness to be established in each person watching this broadcast, their family, their homes, their churches, and their ministry, and that there would be an actively seeking people who will seek your face. Lord, I pray the fullness of Psalm 24, Lord, to be manifested, God, in each one watching this broadcast, that this would be a generation that will seek your face. And I pray today that as they do, they will lift up their heads as a gate, and they will lift up their heads as an age-abiding doorway. And let the King of glory come in. And I thank you, Lord, that you will come. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord strong in battle. The Lord of hosts. And Father, now I lift up and I lay my brothers and sisters and all watching this broadcast, their homes, their families, their ministry, their churches at your feet. And the spirit of the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, this was a very different and special um, broadcast today. Go back to the beginning if you join later. There was such a prophetic releasing of prayer that you might want to watch. Would you please share this with others? Please share it. Take it, copy it, 
I'm going to have a final copy done later on today. If you want to wait for it, it will be on YouTube. It's got all the introduction and stuff on there and stuff. So you might want to wait for it. But if you don't want to wait, you can share this copy. But you'll see it because it'll have the, 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 uh, the picture of glory unfolding too on it. Okay, share it with others. You know, use it for a Bible study if you want to. This is yours. It's from God. We're in this together. I want to thank all of you that are praying for us, encouraging us, and those of you that are blessing us with your finances. It's been, a, I got to say, it's been a difficult time, but we're going to overcome it because we're getting ready for this next convergence. And I know that as, as we always face some resistance as we going from one place to another. So would you continue to pray for us and pray as God would show you for us and pray that the resources that we need, because there are things that we need for this particular conversion that are different than others. And pray for, pray for us to get the resources so that all that, that are coming will have what they need to take care of their homes, us too, and then have enough to travel to get there. You know, please, would you keep that in your prayers? And if, but God, if you're watching for this first time and the Lord touches you to give a blessing, you can do so. Okay, we have, I'm going to type it up right now, you know, and if you would like to, you know, amen. It's, you know, that's between you and the Lord. So our prayer is that God would touch those that he will. Let me spell that right. Name of there, 2007. If you want to know more about the convergence, this is a link to the convergence. I hope I did it right. I didn't. There should be no slash after the two. I did it wrong. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm sorry. I can't see it. It's too far away from me right now. ORG slash events. Okay, that should get you there. If you would like to sow a bless, give a blessing, love gift to the Lord, you can do it at this PayPal link. Our website, without the events, also has a donation link. We appreciate every one of you that are praying for us so much. And those of you that have been encouraging us and those of you that have been giving financial blessings, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. The Lord knows I can never repay you for your kindness, but God will. My God will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I pray that release over you today. Thank you for your heart of love towards the Lord and your heart of love to Don and I. We appreciate you so much. Amen. If we can serve you or help you anyway, please just send me a message on Facebook or my email address, which I should put up there. If we can serve you in any way, you can email me at this address and we will pray for you. I take every prayer request very seriously and try to help those that God allows us to, if we have the means to help, we help. All right, we love you. We're in this together. Please remember October 6th through the 11th. Maybe God would have you come to this convergence in, in, in Plymouth, Massachusetts, right where the Mayflower came, okay? You may need to be there if you're a singer, dancer, musician. You don't have to have any of those gifts to come. If you're just a lover of God, a radical and loved one, you are welcome. If you're five-fold minister, you're welcome. But if you are trained in ministry of David's Tabernacle, that is helpful to us because God will put you to, into service to minister to him there if you would choose to come. All the, all the details are on the web page. Go to the uh, events page and you can register. I would, if, you, if you're even thinking about coming, register now so you save yourself a place. Seating is limited. And if you think you're going to come, you can reserve a hotel at a discounted rate. Now, there might be cheaper hotels around. You can look. But this one is reduced $80 where, where we are at the Hilton Garden. And you don't have to stay there. There's other hotels around. But if you want to stay at this one, we have a special rate and a link for you to to, to uh, do that. Now, tonight at 7 p.m., we're having a special broadcast about the divine convergence. I hope you can join us then. Well, until next week, or if God has me go on at another time, we will see you. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for watching this broadcast. 
of Unfolding Glory 2. My name is Henry Falcone, you know, from Flame of Fire Ministries, Kingdom Awakening Messengers. Love you all. Bye-bye.